and retweets. And I mean, don't people get it? I mean, this is to steal your money. They've been doing this for a long time, stealing your gold. Now they're stealing whatever fiat currency they gave you. You're helping them facilitate their end game and making you broke. The only way to make money in this space is really, I think, I don't know if there's going to be another bull run and I could give a shit. Put your money where the utility is. Follow the money and you find out where the money is going and where it's going to be and how you're going to generate that later on down the road. Uh, everything else, stay away from it. I highly encourage people also to get all their money off the exchanges, including Robinhood, which is for really stocks. I mean, these people are insolvent. Well, good afternoon, folks. It's 17 minutes after two. You know exactly which team we're on. 17, you get it? Okay. Uh, this is Rasan al Jarrah from Black Swan Capitalist. He did a couple of interviews, a gentleman over, in, a young gentleman who's up and coming, but I, I smell talent. And I don't do it based on numbers, how many people they got on their channels. I do it based on talent, based on the fact that I think these guys are going to go. This is going to be the new generation of XRP soldiers. I don't think he's yet XRP Army 2.0, but I do believe he's 1.5, okay? He's definitely not stuck in the one because he's starting to come over to our side. Uh, great interviews. I've been watching him for a little while. Uh, but before we get started, folks, always, as usual, hit the pause button, go down below, follow us on Rumble, QFS1776.com is the holy grail of what's to come. The t-shirts, you got to get yourself decorated because people need to understand that there is a tsunami coming. It's called the quantum financial system reset, not the global reset, not the one that you're not going to have nothing and be happy. They're going to have nothing and they're going to be dead. Most of them are already anyway. We'll get into that conversation maybe a little bit for shits and giggles. Gold and silver, don't even waste your time. Don't waste your time looking for cheaper prices. Almost $8 billion in sales in the last 33 years. Triple A uh, rating on the Better Business Bureau, okay? It doesn't get better than this. The cheapest prices, the real physical gold and silver delivered to your doorstep, no questions asked, at the cheapest prices. Also, our telegrams is right down below. If you want to buy $10,000 worth of XRP or $10 million worth of XRP or $500,000 worth of XRP, I'm the guy that can make that happen for you. We got over 350 brokers and growing worldwide, okay? We are connected where the big boys shop, okay? Also, if you had recently debt forgiveness, okay, and you're not camera shy, or maybe you want to come on the show without having the camera on, I don't have a problem with that. We can redact all your documentation. Send me an email to QFS1776 at Gmail, and we'll put you on the show. Brother, welcome to the show, man. I heard you say Jasara Nasara in your last interview with that young gentleman over there in Australia. I said, okay, this guy's waking up. I got to get him on the show. And Amber jumped into action immediately, got you on the show. Welcome, brother. Tell us how in the world did you get into digital assets? Tell us your story specifically. Okay, amazing. First of all, amazing introduction, man. Thank you so much for that. And again, it's it's a pleasure to be on. Um, you know, I've been watching your stuff for some time and I really love what you're doing here. Okay, so um, as far as my story, it really begins in about 2018. We were in, um, you know, we were here at home and we had an emergency family meeting. Uh, we had to come upstairs. It was my stepfather and uh, his uh, contacts in Saudi Arabia. His name is Khalid al Sunaid, and he's an advisor to the royal family of Saudi Arabia. So we grew up with these people when we were younger uh, overseas before we moved here. And we had this family emergency meeting. The whole family was told to come, my mother, my sister, very close friends. And they were telling us about this technology called uh, XRP. And they said that it was going to shake the foundation of the financial system. And that at some point later on down the road, uh, that would be adopted globally. So my brother and I, we uh, really, that's really when we started our journey into crypto and digital assets and all this stuff. And we, we started doing our research and I'm not kidding. It took us about 10 days to realize that XRP really was the answer. 
uh, compared to a lot of the other digital assets that are out there, including Bitcoin. So, you know, it took us roughly 10 days to say, hey, man, Bitcoin is out of the question for this. And let's look at this asset right here. And when we started to discover what really XRP is, we found this that it's this unique piece of technology, um, very strange, can run without internet. Very few people know this. Um, until now, I don't have answers for why that's possible, but I think we'll get there. And um, we, we discovered that this technology uh, was, it had the ability to be a neutral bridge asset as well to, tra to transfer value from A to B. And the fact that it's neutral it raised a lot of questions as far as monetary policy with our central banks currently right now. And we started to realize that, okay, we understand that when they slap sanctions on other countries, how they're affecting their currencies and their economies. And we can understand why the world now looks towards like the BRICS nations and this, this new system we keep talking about, right? So again, we have a lot of questions still that are unanswered. We're still on this journey and we're trying to learn from people such as yourself and other individuals, you know, out there. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's been very interesting and I think we are on the right path and we've uh, secured our investments as well. And uh, yeah, we're just really playing the weight game right now and keeping up with what the central banks are doing and all the new developments behind the scenes. So absolutely. In one of your interviews uh, with the gentleman over in, uh, over in Australia, which uh, he's coming on my show too, by the way, uh, you had said that it's their job to move all of the cash into digital currency. Can you elaborate on that a little bit, if you don't mind? Sure. So um, I found out a disturbing secret why the initial creation of cryptocurrencies was actually implemented and financed by some of the commercial banks that we're familiar with, uh, JP Morgan, uh, Bank of America. Turns out that they were the ones who were financing and a lot of this also comes out from Mark Moss. Uh, we're trying to get him on our channel, actually. Uh, so he can elaborate this in even better. So it turns out the, the banks, the commercial banks were behind this. And what they did uh, was finance and allow this, all this entire cryptocurrency, 22,000 cryptocurrency uh, space to flourish and basically to fund and build them up to make it look like there's utility, that there's innovation happening. And it, it's all bullshit. And what they did was they financed it to where they got the entire middle class so concerned about inflation and just generally, I got to get into this new thing like the dot-com bubble. And millions of people, retail investors, honest people who are just trying to make an honest buck, right? They were conned and they were scammed out of all this money and were not finished, by the way. So the idea was to knock out several birds with one stone. By opening the space in the crypto, right, it allowed many middle class people and, uh, you know, young investors too, to put their cash into the banking system. And that's why um, I've talked about this in some of my videos, we're starting to see um, cash disappear at an alarming rate. And this is happening globally as well. So, you know, um, that was really, we were helping facilitate their end game, which was getting rid of the cash. And uh, many of us lost money. Um, and many people are still losing money and there's a lot more pain to come. So we're not finished yet. Uh, this is the news I wanted to bring up is uh, a few hours ago, BlockFi just filed for bankruptcy. This is today. Wow. Just filed for bankruptcy. So that's pretty serious. And uh, the reason I'd like to hop into this for a second is because sure. people don't understand is that uh, we'll get into the whole Democratic Party later on, but the FTX spill, right, is not finished. There was leverage and collateral with uh, through um, FTX with uh, BlockFi, Gemini, Grayscale, Genesis. So it's not over. And basically, this liquidity crisis is spilling over into these other uh, exchanges. And I personally am confident in what I'm about to say is that they are not solvent. I think they don't have money. If everyone went to withdraw their money right now at the same time, you will find out that they do not have enough liquidity in their systems to facilitate such a transaction. Wow. You know, <laughs> we'll talk about this maybe a little bit later, but Big Boy down in the Bahamas is very comical right now. <laughs> I wouldn't be worried about a guy that's very voiceless hanging outside your balcony yelling. I would be worried about the guy that you can't see who's a, a sniper potentially from two miles out with a silencer that's going to pop your head like a freaking pimple. That's the guy I would be afraid of. OK, and this guy is a lot of danger, I think. Huh? He's got more hits than a contract killer. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. So how long do you think the cash is going to take before it completely disappears? And what role do you think the, the, um, this, um, 
rainbow currency that no one's has seen yet. It's only been a bunch of people designing some fancy stuff on the internet. No one has sent me the video yet of the pallets that they stumbled across in their banks while they're working at some XYZ bank. Have you seen any video of the actual rainbow currency? How long do you think it will take for the cash to disappear? And what role do you think the actual rainbow currency uh, will play in this whole entire game? Okay, so as far as cash disappearing, I think that's going to take a little bit longer than we expect, simply mm -hmm. because we've had this for a very long time. You know, this right. is the financial system, that the debt-based model, I like to call it, and that's really what it is. It's really just the fractional reserve banking, which has allowed all this cash to be printed. And we haven't taken into account that Saudi Arabia, too, when Saudi Arabia, um, I, I'm a Saudi citizen, I get information from the Saudi kingdom. I'm not even joking on a, a weekly basis. Wow. And, uh, Saudi Arabia, they have already announced publicly and quietly, and they they are making the arrangements for OPEC and the Saudi kingdom to come out and say, hey, America, it's been a nice ride, but we are done with the petrodollar. And when that happens, what people don't understand is that overnight, um, all nations and governments worldwide start dumping dollars. And as they dump dollars, all that money comes back to America and it creates a surplus, a global surplus of uh, cash and fiat currency also. And debt, and you know, dollar is a unit of debt. So what that's going to do is really completely tank the market and uh, depreciate the currency's value, anyways. So as the value of the currency gets weaker, I think this will help facilitate um, getting rid of the cash because if it has no value, why the hell would you have it, right? Um, so you know, I can see that playing a role in there too. Um, but as far as this rainbow currency, uh, we're talking about the new uh, monetary system that they're trying to put, and we're talking about the novel. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay, so I know for a fact, and a lot of inside information was shared with me as well, and I've done my own research, um, but it turns out that there are going to be classes within this new currency system, and it's pretty terrifying, actually. Um, what, what I discovered is we're going to have, um, and also a lot of this came from Crypto Rick, he'll be able to tell you more about this in grave detail. Uh, so yeah, they're going to be divided into classes. You're going to have restricted, uh, quarantined, and... Mm -hmm. uh, sovereign which actually is like a free pass and exempt from vaccinations from uh, carbon footprint so uh, that's really as much as i know regarding the rainbow currency you're talking about but i know the davos group is trying to implement this new uh, financial system to enslave us they really are so there's there is a luciferian evil uh, sinister agenda behind all of it and really when you go down the rabbit hole to understand how this is going to play out later on and we're talking about Nasara Jasara now, I want to integrate this into it, is there's something a lot of people don't know, and it really does exist. Um, there's, a, there's a technology called, uh, well, it's Project Looking Glass. When you, when you understand Project Looking Glass, you, 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 you really can't understand how it's going to play out, but you can speculate a little bit more, uh, better. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about Project Looking Glass. I know you've been in the rabbit hole for a long time, but yeah, that's, that's a real... Uh, really classified sensitive topic, which plays into Nasara Chisara. You know, yeah. really, yeah, I've so. been in the rabbit hole probably longer than you've been alive, brother. I'm 31 years. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. uh, what are, where are the uh, Zims, the Dinars, the Dongs, the Boulevards, the Iraqi, rather the uh, Iranian money too, they're saying the Rial supposedly is going to get reevaluated. Where are you on that, if at all, have an opinion? I'm not sure. Hmm. Um, Crypto Rick did ask me something similar to that about the dinar uh, being mm. reevaluated. Now, if we're talking about fiat currency, right? Yes, paper money. Right. If we're going to have paper money, I don't, I don't see us having paper money simply because of the way things are playing out. Now, I could be wrong. I don't know everything. Sure. But uh, I haven't really done much research into the reevaluation of fiat currencies. Um, but here's something interesting we can look at. Let's say the financial quantum financial system is not launched yet, or this new system that they're trying to bring in is not launched yet. And we see the dollar collapse on itself. I could see a reevaluation of fiat currency if we still have it, you know, why not? Right. Uh, I think really also then again, fiat currency, we need to understand is that the only way fiat currency has value is, is based on the confidence that you have in it. Right. But if everything is attached to the dollar, which it is still, right, as a, um, a world reserve currency, so they're still attached to the dollar. If this changes, which I think it will, 
then yeah, I could see them resetting their currencies because it's no longer attached to the dollar. Maybe it's attached to something else like gold, maybe, uh, or, or not attached. People got my ass about this, pegged, let's just say, okay? Um, you know, if it was, it could be pegged to uh, commodities. Um, and that's really what the BRICS nations is all about is basically resetting the, 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 the neutral bridge asset, right? Now, gold has always been around and it's been back currencies in the past too. So, um, you know, I mean, something like that, I think would integrate into all of this, but yeah, then again- I like, I like to have a conversation and maybe interact with you a little bit on that. Here's my thought. And I think it might make sense. You may either agree or disagree. It doesn't matter, but there's a lot of old people that are not going to go digital yet. That's why they're buying gold and silver. The link's down below guys. Okay. Um, and don't forget to use the promo code Mel Carmine. Uh, the reality is they, un they know physical assets. Okay. So I'm going to take paper money that is going to be backed by gold and silver. A certain amount of that gold is going to go towards backing the paper money. And they understand that they don't have to figure it out. They don't have to go to a school. They don't have to listen to whiz bang kids like you and me. And uh, not that I even put myself in that category because I'm not anywhere near a whiz bang kid. But what I'm saying is they got to keep it simple, stupid for maybe another eight, 10, 15 years until the dinosaurs, you know, are no longer here or until we're able to get inside a med bed and make everybody hyper intelligent. And then boom, we go digital. Everybody understands it. everybody gets it. But right now, it's a transitional period and not everybody is. Uh, that's why I say to people, Hey, if you don't understand cryptocurrency, buy yourself some gold and silver. There's nothing to understand. Buy it, store it in a very safe place. Have one of these, you know, guns at your house, <laughs> make sure you protect your stuff. And that's it. You, there's nothing to get. Right. And when it gets evaluated or reevaluated, well, are you, you're worth some money. Right. And you weathered the storm pretty darn good. If you do understand this stuff like XRP, what is it a little complicated? Yes, of course it is. But you have to take into accountability the, the elderly. Okay, my mom's 81 years old. She happens to get it because I, I've been feeding her this stuff ever since I, get, I got into it. And she's very brilliant. She's got an incredible mind. Uh, so she gets it. But she's not the average 81-year-old. She understands XRP. She's got a black belt in XRP. I made sure of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, needless to say, uh, where are you in regards to Rosie Rios? Uh, and is she a black hat? Is she a white hat? Um, or do you want to maybe comment on what I just said in regards to, you know, the elderly and the digital assets, et cetera, and versus physical assets? Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, first thing, I also want to make this clear to your, uh, your viewers too. Uh, mm -hmm. Gold is not designed for people to get rich and mm -hmm. i know you cover this pretty well it's designed to stay rich when everything falls apart uh i did bring some things i wanted to show if you mind. sure so this is a five gram all combi bar and this is a one gram pamp for gold now the reason i i highly recommend if people are going to be buying precious metals to buy uh smaller amounts like this smaller ones but many of them simply because if we start to see a meltdown of the financial system, which we will at some point, of course, this would be, uh, um, you know, it would be considered, um, what's the word? I lost my train of thought. This is money right here, mm -hmm. simple. Sure. Uh, but when you're holding smaller amounts, uh, it makes it safer to transact with them. I mean, if you're holding a bigger amount, you know, then uh, it could be problematic later on when sure. <laughs> people came and put food on the table. Absolutely. So I throw out there, silver and gold, two of the most, um, undervalued assets right now and the reason why is because they've been manipulated because of the current debt-based system we have as long as they're printing money they can manipulate the price of precious metals and totally to do so um as far as what you said now regarding um the older people the older generation yes i i absolutely agree with you on that you know um as they are transitioned out and we have the new younger generation who's been raised practically on technology now, including with the pandemic, that kind of facilitate, facilitated the idea of getting humanity into the digital realm as far as the workforce, or whatever. Right. So you're right about that. And I totally agree with you, you know? Um, now, regarding what Rosie Rio said, and the train has already left the station and whatnot, but, you know, Rosie Rios, I, I've tried to done, do more research on her and there's not a lot of videos out there of her speaking. You could go on YouTube, you'll find a few, but you know, I really don't know whether she's helping 
you know, win this thing or if she's working with the Davos group. But what concerns me a little bit, and I've seen in the comments, and, you know, there are a lot of people out there that leave these comments and it really, I read every comment. So I'm learning more from what people are asking. And there are people that raise concerns as far as the World Economic Forum being involved with Ripple. That raises a lot of questions, right? Here we are mm -hmm. talking about uh, dissolving the World Economic Forum, the Davos Group from enslaving us, right? But here we are investing in this digital asset that is, um, they're partnered with the World Economic Forum. But then I look at the digital asset itself and I start to say, again, this is a neutral ground technology. It could be used for to enslave humanity or to free it from whatever, we, you know, these problems that we have in the world. Uh, but then again, still learning, you know, always asking questions, digging deeper as much as I can and, you know, having regular discussions with experts. You know. Yeah, they do send mixed signals. You know, the Rosie Rios, the the Georgievas, that lady should just, you know, somebody should just give her a batch of chocolate chip batter cookies and put her in the kitchen and say, go bake your cookies, forget about it, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, needless to say, uh, you know, uh, and then you got the the, uh, the lady with the white hair, what's her name? Um, Christine, Lagarde. Christine Lagarde. There you go. The old, uh, she's been, it's the same players. They just keep, move, keep moving them around the chessboard. It's the same players that are in charge over and over and over again. And it's it's funny when you pay as much as attention as we do, we got your number. But you know they do send mixed signals as to which team they're on. Are you on Klaus Schwab team? You'll have nothing and own nothing and be happy. Or are you on Jassar and Nassar team? There are definitely two teams on on the field. And that seventeenth letter that we're not allowed to mention because of obvious reasons of these different platforms, et cetera. But that seventeenth letter right now is kicking ass. And uh, I was watching the video earlier today, and they they said it perfectly. I, I've thought about this in my in my mind. When this goes down, it's going to go down like the Godfather Part Two, where he, where Michael Corleone says, "Don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of all the heads of the five family, the Bazzini, the the Cannolis, whatever, all of that stuff, right?" And and, and the reality is, while he's do, in church doing the baptism, everybody got whacked. That's how it's going to go down with the Q movement and it's going to happen uber fast. I actually wouldn't be surprised. There will be some sort of revolution, some sort of assassinations. It's going to be a collaborated, orchestrated, uh, you know, everybody's going to have their watches synchronized. And it's when it's go time, it's going to be the militaries of all the world that are on board Minasara Jasara. And there is going to be some shit that's going to really hit the fan. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned something um it, it, this is pretty this is pretty scary for most of my audience i know and we've heard this before uh in regards to there being two ledgers and uh and one private and one but you said at some point they're going to merge and you also said something to the level of a deliberate mistake maybe the white hats were sending us a message maybe not but you said there was a mistake of xrp on the private ledger being worth $327,000 um talk to us about that sure so um this this happened about two years ago i think uh this is you know around the time we were just getting into xrp because it took us a while to really research this stuff anyways so we saw a youtube video and i'm not kidding about this it was on it was on a japanese live market and it was a five minute video and we saw the xrp price just like that one of the shorts I posted where you've got a clear screen of the computer, you see the XRP, it's not fake. You know I mean? You can't fake the stuff if you try to. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, and this thing, yeah, I'm not even kidding, man. It started at about like a few bucks and then it started yeah. five minute video and I'm not joking. It went to 20,000, then it went to 25 and 30. And, and I was watching, it was the XRP price. And then I'm not even kidding. After about five minutes, it was at 327,000. That's when I got off of it. And I was like, you know, I wondered, I, I asked my brother, how is this possible? And we talked about the private and the public, you know, and my brother and I, we discuss everything, you know, to the, all of the details as much as we can. We have arguments, don't get me wrong. You know, we have a lot. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Opposite people. Um, if you've watched some of our interviews, you could tell I'm, we're complete opposites. He's the, he's the good cop. I'm the bad cop. You know, I try to bring the ruckus. All right. So right, right. <laughs> um, when I saw this, it gave me a better understanding of what we're, we own here. And it also raised so many questions that until today, I don't understand. But I know for a fact, I mean, well, I don't know this for a fact, I'm sorry. 
But there is, it seems that there is a public and a private ledger simply because we are seeing, and these are not glitches. I don't believe in glitches, okay? I don't think so. I think we have a private and a public and simply why is because assets are being traded in XRP already. And I'm talking about financial institutions, um, you know, uh, and they could be testing it as well. Um, mm. And so they're not holding it on probably the public ledger simply because there's no regulation. And that's what I'm thinking of. I haven't really, I should do more due diligence before I speak about it more though. And sure. this is what I spoke about in my last video, because I've said things months ago that I've changed my perspective on them now. You know? Right, right. Well, you know, in regards uh, to the private and uh, public ledger, you also said that there are uh, separated via the nodes. Uh, are you saying also that there's two different kinds of nodes that keep track of each one? Obviously, would have to be a resounding yes. Yes, I do. I think the SEC uh, has SEC even uh, there's a short I posted where uh, Stuart Adorati and he's very vocal and he's becoming more vocal, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. If you a lot of research into a lot of the stuff he's talked about, go on his Twitter and like scroll down over and over and over. I'm telling you at some point or check out his videos. If you start going back, I'm talking about 2019, you know, 2008, right. you see people like David Schwartz, he, he gave a speech three years ago, four years ago, I think. And I watched it again yesterday. And guess what? I learned something that it made more sense based on the research I did now, right? So it put another puzzle for me together. Stu Alderati made it very clear that the SEC once walked into Ripple with no permission and slammed and said, we're going to put a note on the uh, XRP ledger right now. And then they sued them. Mm. Interesting. So regarding, the, yeah, regarding the private ledger and the public ledger, when the merger of those two ledgers, let's say it does happen, uh, what do you think? Because see, here's my, my problem with the original XRP army versus this new XRP army that I think you're slowly but surely graduating into. And I think the gentleman over there in Australia that you uh, did an interview with as well, uh, what's his name, Crypto Rick? Rick, yeah, Crypto Rick. Right. Uh, he, he's up and coming. He's definitely going to be a monster because he gets the new world. My problem is this, that the XRP army, original army, wastes so much time and energy coming up with all these sophisticated words to, to explain to you a world that is going to be burnt down to ashes. It's no longer going to exist. I'm more focused on what's the new world we're graduating into? What's that world look like? Let me explain that world because that's the world that's going to be here for a thousand years. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, um, so, you know, look, when you're in my line of work and I got into this by sheer accident, I didn't, I didn't set off and say, oh, I'm going to build a hundred thousand people in the next 11 and a half months. That's not how it went exactly. And I've had all kinds of people stab me in the back and, you know, when you're trying to climb Mount Everest, there are people waiting with machetes and samurai swords waiting to chop your fucking head off. Wow. It's a fact. OK. No, I, and a lot of people stab me in the back, et cetera. I could tell you those stories, too. But we won't get we won't go there. Uh, but the, the reality is why waste that much energy describing a world that is going to be probably no longer within a year or two? And that's being pessimistic, according to some. OK, uh, we've had debt forgiveness people we have uh, some more on 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 deck uh, my my friend mitch who is uh one of our you know investors who went through our brokers uh who who went in pretty heavy and uh i could tell you he's been there a few times uh going through our brokers with the most incredible experience he i said i said to him and he said mel we just simply stopped paying the bill and then they sent us that the debt was forgiven. So um, I got to call him. I got to call Mitch and find out. Because if that is the, the key, because I've been saying, stop paying your bills and maybe they'll go away. Because I think Mitch, Mitch, if you're out there listening, you got to get in touch with me, brother. Because that, I think that's how it happened. And they got five more, you know, uh, debt and credit card uh, bills that are going to be forgiven too. So I got to get on with Mitch and find out that, that I, mean, I have a feeling, this is me talking now, based on what I talked to him, but he never really came out and said it, but I think that's what he was hinting at. And I got to get down to the bottom of that, because if that's the play here, then it's easy. Everybody just stops paying their credit card bill. And because we're transitioning over into this Nassar Jassar, we're going into a debt jubilee. It's very easy to figure out that maybe 
a lot of people are going to get debt forgiveness. I, I don't know. What do you think about that? You know what? That's first of all, that's the first time I've I've heard anything like that. And I think it's pretty amazing. And guess what? It could be a possibility. I'll get I'll give you an example that can relate to this in a way. Mm. Um, like the IRS. Uh, you don't actually have a legal obligation to pay taxes. You don't. Right. Uh, you know, that's something you could volunteer to offer if you'd like. But sure. this is the same way, you know, if if people just stopped paying um, the IRS altogether, they're not gonna arrest everybody. The whole system would collapse. The only reason right. they're still in power and they can be like the mafia is be, and take whatever you have is because everybody is embedded in that programming that we need to pay our taxes. It goes back to the economy. It goes back to the streets. Have you looked at the damn infrastructure in the USA? It looks like shit compared to anywhere else in the world. And I'm not kidding. Absolutely. Everywhere else well. But you could tell if you just come to America and I grew up in Dubai. The cities are beautiful. The money comes back to the country and it actually gets into the infrastructure, into the innovation and all these, uh, the jobs and the people go to America, you look around you. And if you're, if you're not, not an idiot and you could see through all the bullshit, you just look around and you're like, okay, none of the money is coming here. None of it. It's going to pla black broad, uh, project uh, budgets and um, totally black budget projects. Yes. It's going to uh, a lot of the congressmen and senators that are pushing the laws to help these globalists continue to enslave the West uh, with their, their own, you know, the d democracy is disguised uh, behind something much sinister. It really is. You know, it's now not really democracy versus, I mean, Democrat versus Republicans. It's more like um, losing your freedoms versus freedom at this point. That's I, what, what I see now. So well, the, the Democratic to, Party is resembling the Communist Party more and more. And I think we're not too far from just call it what it is, call it communism, because that's what it is. It is. Uh, if I could throw something in there, too, is uh, I have a very strange feeling that uh, the administration uh, sold out the entire country to the Chinese, possibly, um, simply because also we are losing the hegemony yeah. of the dollar is a reserve currency. We're losing the um, economic war as well and the trade war and uh, technology war too. Well, you know, technology, that's like a 50-50, but I really think that America's in deep shit and the people here are in, in, and worldwide too are even in deeper shit and they're very close and uh, losing all their freedoms, you know? Well, SG Anon, who's coming on my show, guys, by the way, uh, SG Anon actually in a few interviews recently has said the exact date and time that Biden was taken out down in Castro territory. You're right. in a movie. The guy you see, we're on we're on probably version number three, version four, who the hell knows? You're, you're in a movie. Uh, he's being controlled by the White Hats to bring in the crash, to bring in Jasara Nasara, the whole, you know, Kabuki theater lawsuit, which has been settled, in my opinion, uh, you know, back in October 1st, 2021, et cetera. Uh, you know, look, when this whole shit storm blows over and it's go time is a hundred thousand dollar XRP because they need it at a hundred thousand. Is that out of the realm or, or am I delusional? Because people say, oh, you got to think about market cap again. Market cap is what? Old world. Old world is what? Dying. Right. I'm, re I'm ready. For this. I'm ready for this. Okay. First of all, market cap doesn't mean shit anymore. It really doesn't. A lot of people will disagree. That's totally fine. I, I, I really could care what other people's opinions are. I'm telling you what I know. And uh, people are, they have the right to agree or not agree. And that's totally fine. But market cap doesn't mean shit. The question is also, you know, when we start to ask about the price of XRP, um, we need to understand the underlying infrastructure beneath it and the underlying infrastructure beneath it really is the DLT distributed ledger technology based on my interview with uh, Simon Hunt and Andy Sheckman and a few others, including Jimmy in the past. I kind of put the whole puzzle together and I'm trying to, to the best of my ability. What it seems to me is happening is that we are moving, of course, tokenizing the economy. And we're talking about insurance, real estate, NFTs, you name it, everything, right? Entertainment as that, and not to mention global debt and CBDCs, if that's going to be a thing, you know? So, uh, when we're talking about value, we're attaching this value or pegging it, let's say the value, all of it to a DLT technology. And then again, you look at the ISO coins, you have um, XRP ta targets, cross-border payments, XLM business, consumer transactions, micropayments, maybe uh, XDC, global trade and finance. Anyways, 
they are all targeting different marketplaces, not competing against each other, they're complementing each other. And by targeting those different uh, parts of the economy, you have now all these technologies that can create this one central bank, right? That can do everything. So we're talking about all the value in the world. I personally be believe, and I'm happy to be ridiculed for it, that the price of XRP could actually be infinite. And um, you know, also we think about the burn uh, per transaction of value, moving it back and forth, that burns it, which means the price would be having to go higher. So the higher the price is of the digital asset XRP, the more liquid it becomes. If people understand that, and look then at the technology itself and say, oh, okay, this makes sense. This is why we can add the value of the global economy onto this thing, right? This, these DLTs, then there you go, man. You know, that's your monetary reset right there. You know? So tokenizing the gold on the XRPL, the most sophisticated blockchain known to mankind, the one that cannot be hacked, even hackers have, it, have confessed at this point, unhackable, okay? Is that far-fetched? Or do you think that uh, it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be gold backing XRP. I think it's going to be XRP backing the gold. I don't think all of it. I think some of it has to be allocated towards the Zims and the Dinars and, and the rainbow currency. If that comes to fruition as well. But I think the, the, which we have quintillions of tons of this stuff. Okay. They've been stealing it from us since biblical times. They three people think they just started stealing the stuff since the Nixon era, you know, you know, it's been going on for a long time. Explain. Well, um, you know what I have said in many of my videos that XRP, uh, will be backed by gold, you know, um, I would like to retract that statement. And the reason I say that is because I'm learning new things now that are making me, um, think that, you know what, more than just gold, maybe everything, you know, can be pegged to it or attached to it or whatever you want to call it. But um, when we're talking about moving value and tokenizing, it has to be pegged or attached to the distributed ledger technology, right? So right. now I'm rethinking and my thought process is kind of retraining myself to understand this a little bit better. And this is what I said, you know, we're learning from each other, which is fantastic, by the way. Um, you know, I, I see more than just gold. Now, if you said gold can back up the XRP, that makes sense too. Why not? You know. Well, you see, this is the reason why I call him uh, XRP Army 1.5. He's coming over to our side. Eventually, eventually, every single one. And I'm not trying to take credit for this, but, but man, I'll be I'll be a son of a bitch if you're going to steal my thunder. Okay, I will make sure, if one way or another, that I will be one of the ones that that will be noted for bringing this movement and tying all of the the seventeen, the forty five, the the low lying satellites, the quantum financial system computers, all of it. Okay, I will figure out a way because I've always figured out a way. That's why I call him one point five. He's now changed his mind. Yeah, there's no reason if you're going to tokenize everything in the world. Why not tokenize gold? You cannot finagle the bagel. You cannot say, go back and say, oh, you know, somebody could st stole the gold. No, it's on the blockchain. If you want your gold delivered in the physical sense, because you have a fortress of a house and you want your gold physically in your safe, which at that point, obviously, I think it would be stupid because nobody will ever be able to take your gold from you because it will be attached to some kind of digital debit card. And you'll still be able to spend your gold and you'll still have a running balance, whatever. Uh, but that's where we're headed. Everything is going to be digitized. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the gold that was confiscated uh, at the Vatican. Did you hear about this? I did not. If you, yeah, please enlighten me. I've been paying sure. for about uh, eight months, a year ago or so. Uh, there was uh, stories that came out from uh, Dr. Charlie Ward. I'm sure you know who he is. Yes, uh, I like Scott, Scott McKay some pretty big, prominent people. Um, and uh, they basically said that there was um, confiscation of gold in, in the Vatican, a tunnel that went from the Vatican all the way to Jerusalem, 1,500 kilometers stacked to the gills with gold. You know how much gold you can put? We're talking 30 meters wide, 30 meters high, packed with bricks. And those planes, from I, I've been told, from a few people that those planes are still flying in today because you cannot move 1,500 kilometers worth of gold in, you know, a weekend. It's not going to happen, right? And they're being stored at Cheyenne Mountain. The amounts of gold that are still to be confiscated over in the Philippines 
I know you, you. How old are you, dude? You must be like 26, 27. 29. Okay, 29. See, I was close. Okay, sure. so uh, you might not know maybe some of the history that happened over in the Philippines where World War II, the Japanese won the war. They, you know, put the gold underneath the ground. They thought they were going to win the war, going to go back and take the gold. That didn't happen. They lost the war. That gold, the vast majority of it is still there. That's okay. yes, that, that's yet to be reclaimed. I won't right. call it confiscated, but reclaimed. And they say that that dwarfs the amount of gold that was at the Vatican. So the amount of gold is staggering. Okay. There's so much that we don't know. We're speculators out here trying to figure it all out so right. that we can sort of paint the picture for the new person who comes in and, and you know, your mind's going to blow up. That's why I always say go to QFS1776.com, start watching the videos top to bottom. We put them in a chronological elementary we found the most elementary videos out there so that you could learn so that this is not foreign to you okay you don't eat the elephant you know in one bite you eat one bite at a time just consume the videos and get ready it's not like you have a choice say you know i'm going to stay over here with the fiat no we're burning it down to the ground and out of the ashes will rise the phoenix let's talk about uh in my opinion and this is only my opinion uh, I do believe that uh, Brad Garlinghouse uh, might be part of a new world order. Again, this is one of the guys that sends mixed signals. Where are you on Brad Garlinghouse? He's too clean to not be involved in something fishy. <laughs> right. Uh, just an opinion. The truth is, I really don't know. Uh, he's a good speaker, you know, um, talks about what they're trying to accomplish. But mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that he's a, uh, close ties now with the uh, Davos group and uh, he even wears the socks, man. <laughs> um, is that it, to it, throw us off though? Hmm? Is that to throw us off? It could be. It could because, be. you know, this information is a big deal in this war. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, you know, I haven't seen enough to make a, a, a judgment on that, but you know what, man? I, I do trust your judgment. You know, uh, if you, I mean, what, what have you, what do you think? You know? I think, I think that he could be a, some, I mean, there's very been very few times where I say maybe he's a black cat more, more, uh, more times than none. I steer towards the fact that he is a white hat and he's playing a role in this movie of sort. And, you know, he wears socks. He might as well go get a tattoo that says Davos group on his arm. You know what I mean? You know, if, if that's going to make some people believe it out there, he might he might watch this video. And if he comes up with a tattoo, I'll take credit for that. You know, yes. Brad Garlinghouse got a tattoo of Davos or whatever. The World Economic Forum on his arm. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Jim Valley was on your show. Uh, riveting interview. Riveting. I put it in my Telegram groups. People went wild. OK. And towards the end, he doesn't say it. But he's talking about moving ten million dollars, and he's, you know, talking about moving ten XRP, which basically he's hinting at the fact that an XRP could be a million dollars. And I've seen people talk about, you know, crazy numbers, and nobody really knows, uh, you know, if it's going to be millions of dollars with this buyout. I mean, do you think that? Look, I, I'm about to bring on a really big name. You guys will recognize him when you see him. I'm not going to mention his name yet until he gives me permission. But I'm going to bring on a pretty big name in the XRP community. He mostly is big on uh, Twitter, not uh, so much on YouTube, but he's got a huge following. And uh, he said there's going to be three buyouts. And this guy is pretty serious. So there's going to be three buyouts. One is going to be at 125000 The second one, two years later, will be at 250000 And the final one in about five to six years is going to be at 375000 my question to you is this. Let's say there's a buyout. You probably have hundreds of thousands of XRP and you want to just sell 10 of them. Say, okay, you want to buy me out at 375,000, for example, you sell them 10, that's $3.75 million. You can last for quite a while, depending on your lifestyle, obviously, but you could last for a pretty long time on $3,750,000. Yeah. yeah. Right? If you can no, live absolutely. on a half a million dollars a year, that's at least seven years, correct? Yeah, no, um, thank God I'm very humble and I require very little. So I could last longer.
Exactly. Well, that's a lot longer. But if you live a pretty lavish lifestyle, pretty comfortable lifestyle, you blow a half a million a year, 375, 3.75 million dollars will last you seven point something years. Seven, right? That's a that's a pretty long time. Do you think that they're going to say, yeah. "Oh no, you have to sell it to us," or are they going to implement some kind of law that that it gets everybody to part with their XRP when they do the buyout, or because it sits on our ledger? And I believe because it sits on our ledger and because Klaus Schwab is going to lose, we're going to have the power. We're not going to have the programmable money. We say, no. Okay, yeah, I have hundreds of thousands. It doesn't matter. But I only want to sell you 100 XRP at, you know, 50,000, 100,000, whatever that price buyout is. I don't have to sell you all of it. Where are you on that? Uh, the buyout, the buyback, right? Um, yeah. I don't think they have the authority. Um, nor the the power to really force a buyback. I think what they'll do is, you know, two things play into this, in my opinion, in the short term. Short term, I think raising inflation, wiping out the middle class gradually by keep printing money, mm -hmm. keep buying the currency, basically put the boot on the neck of the middle class. And that's what they were doing, by the way. And they're not covering any of this at all. People are already struggling to meet, make uh, ends meet this mm -hmm. month. Right. But by putting the boot on the middle class, majority of the people are going to have to decide very soon, by the way. And we're talking about a small percentage of the XRP holders who got lucky, and then we'll start to move right. on to the ones who do hold it. I know people right. that hold uh, more than 30,000 XRP, and guess what? They don't have any cash. They don't have gold. They don't have water. They don't have food, um, like stacked up, right? So they're going to get to a point where they're going to have to decide, do I want to hold my XRP or put food on my table? Yeah. So it's one way to uh, get people to sell it at cheaper prices. Number two, uh, Zach Rector's, uh, he, he put a video that uh, until today catches my uh, you know eye. And he said the Fed needs our XRP. So another thing is if the Fed wanted to pump the price up with the end of the lawsuit or whatever shit news they want to give it, just to pump it up a little bit, $10, $20, half the XRP community will probably sell. you know. And then you have uh, a small percentage of the people in the XRP community who truly understand the value people like you and I and a few others out there who don't want to sell at all <laughs> or not until later on. But shaking people out, I think they're already doing that. And also by scaring the hell out of people with the collapses of these exchanges too. You have mm -hmm. a lot of people selling their XRP. Oh, I just give up on fucking crypto. I'm, I'm done with this. So <laughs> yeah, they're already exactly. shaking they are already shaking people out. And the ones who don't have a clear understanding of what the hell is really going on here, people like us again, um, they are going to sell because they'll panic. And then the ones who are not selling because of panic, they just don't have, they can't afford to hold it. You know, um, it's, it's going to, you know, they're already shaking people out. I'm not well, so concerned with a buyback again. Uh, so sorry, man. Uh, the buyback, I don't think that again, they can force it because we all have our hardware wallets. And the only way they can do it is they tried to pull on some Gestapo shit, you know, well, you said like something that, was, that that struck a chord with me the other day. You said maybe five to ten percent maximum of the XRP people really truly understand XRP, and I could not that's agree being, more. Yeah, that's being generous, right? Being generous, that's right. I would say right. five to five 10%. to ten percent. No I'd say it's probably closer to five percent, four or five percent, and not ten percent. But I, the guys who are really understand how huge this is going to be, that's what he's talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. You also had said that there's approximately 22,000 tokens. I'll correct you on that. There are 26,000, and there'll probably be 27,000 by the end of this month. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's somebody in the garage wow. creating the next Ponzi scheme. There's, there's that many. And you said that wow. the regulators and the government people and the politicians are allowing these Ponzi schemes to happen. What in the world is their motivation? Oh, this is great. Uh, good question. The motivation is to keep the Ponzi schemes going, keep convincing people that, hey, there's new opportunities, keep having the people get rid of their cash for the central banks and mm. helping them attain their end game, which is, you know, becoming 100% digital. Um, also, we see that they're stealing money from people too. Um, a lot of this is all theft. And I, I'm just so surprised that people, they don't get it still. You know, it's like Celsius, Terra, 
Uh, this has been going on for a while now. It's not the first time. Oh, yeah. And I, I, it's like every time, now what happened with BlockFi, I feel like we're going to have the deja vu again. Oh, look what happened, you know, and the same hysteria and retweets. And I mean, don't people get it? I mean, this is to steal your money. They've been doing this for a long time, stealing your gold. Now they're stealing whatever fiat currency they gave you. You're helping them facilitate their end game and making you broke. The only way to make money in this space is really, I think, I don't know if there's going to be another bull run and I could give a shit. Put your money where the utility is. Follow the money and you find out where the money is going and where it's going to be and how you're going to generate that later on down the road. Uh, everything else, stay away from it. I highly encourage people also to get all their money off the exchanges, including Robinhood, which is for really stocks. I mean, these people are insolvent. They don't have... The banks have been loaning money when they don't have it. They don't have liquidity for this stuff. The banks are broke. And it's like, yeah, people are going to yeah. have a root to all this very soon. So that's yeah. what I mean. You know, the congressmen and the senators and the SEC, they're allowing these Ponzi schemes to go because guess what? They're, they're getting what they want. Yeah, I guess. Uh, you also said, uh, said um, you described the ISO coins and you said they don't need to be called that. And they already been put in place. Please go further deep into that if you can. Okay. So when I said the ISO coins not being called ISO, I do not, I might have been drinking too much coffee, but uh, <laughs> ISO is, really, yeah, I drink a lot of coffee. ISO is really, is really just like, um, yes, two espressos, man. Wow. Um, yeah, no, I, I really think that, there's a big misunderstanding when people talk about this whole ISO thing, right? That's not important. Really what it is, is hmm. it's really like a community. Right. Uh, and they all have the same agreements and policies and they know what they are, their end game is. And that's really the green agenda. You know, uh, the, the green agenda is really the end game here for uh, the, the Davos group and whatnot. So all these technologies, you know, they're all green, they're carbon neutral or carbon negative, you know? Um, totally. So that that's what makes them... That's what makes them so important in my eyes also, because they are following, they, their, their thinking is aligned with the World Economic Forum, the Davos group and going green entirely. But again, you know, the ISO coins, it's just, they're all targeting different marketplaces and that's why there's utility in each of them, you know, in the economy. Right. And then the ISO basically means that there, these are, these ones have utility, the ISOs period. Um, you also mentioned and, something about the federal reserve, the debt bubble, uh what what is the reason for them to just keep printing money is this part of them wanting the whole thing to crash so that we can get into the new system and what could we do to expedite it yeah um i think what we're they're doing right now is i keep very close on the central banks if people keep asking when moon and all that stuff to understand all that what's happening in the crypto blockchain space too i think you need to really start like follow the money, right? Look, let's look at the central banks. Central banks, their end game is to become the um, the you know lenders and buyers of last resort. So um, their their goal right now is to continue to inflate the market, and that's what they've been doing. It's like a balloon. Ever since two thousand and eight, the financial crash, um, the banks were uh, bailed out by the Federal Reserve, and yes. the Fed warned them that this is not going to happen again can't do this. So what happened after 2008, um, the creation of Bitcoin, the creation of <clears throat> XRP later on down the road too with Ripple and whatnot. So this all this cryptocurrency started coming shortly after uh, the 2008 crash because people were being told that they could convince others into believing that, hey, regulation is not important. We don't need the banks anymore. We have a, a buyer and a user and that's it, right? We don't need an intermediator anymore, the banks. So <clears throat> again, after all this, they realized what was happening. They knew where the hell we were going to be right now. They know they knew this in advance mm -hmm. that we were going to be at this point sometime because any fiat currency system always fails. Printing money destroys nations. And uh, it really does, you know? So the, the, the Fed's end game again is to continue to inflate the debt market and keep this balloon inflating of debt. And they're going to blow up the whole thing, man. And the, the more we inflate and print money, right? Not just your currency power um, goes down. It doesn't just continue to depreciate in value. We also export inflation to other countries, which means other countries, since they're still tied to the dollar, are experiencing 
massive amounts of inflation and devaluing of their own currencies because the dollar is a unit of debt. Like I said, all this is gonna tie in at some point when the, the rest of the world gets so sick of what the, they're doing with the dollar, right? The money's just gonna come back here and they're gonna all find a solution, you know? So this, now when we look at the Fed, is the Fed involved as far as trying to blow up their own currencies? Yes, I think they are. I think they're trying to fast track this new CBDC system. You know? Yeah, are you, you are aware obviously that things down in Washington, DC, don't look normal. Of course not. Okay. It's a nut house. It's not a White House. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm, not, I'm going way beyond that. Uh, I'm talking about the Treasury Department. I'm talking about the, the Federal Reserve Building has been completely fenced and they got sandbags around the whole darn thing. Don't ask me why. I don't know what the sandbags uh, mean. Uh, maybe the 17th letter in the alphabet could tell us what that means. I have no clue. Um, the uh, the treasury uh, you you were aware that there were arrests at the treasury or you did you know that or does your audience know that at all yes or no I I don't know that and I'm very happy to hear that by the way and I want oh, to know great perfect well the, the citizen uh, Richard citizen journalist he lives down in Washington D.C. literally and figuratively uh, and so does Nancy Drew and they're constantly down there filming and putting it on the internet. It's a ghost town, okay? They uh, almost got their phones. This is more for your audience. My audience knows about this story a million times, but it's a story that needs to be told because, you know, 0. 0.000002 of the world's population is in digital assets and the world's yet to come. There's a tsunami of people coming. So we got to repeat the story for the new people, which is way the majority. Uh, and so what happened, this story was told by none other than a guy by the name of David Strait. Are you familiar who David Strait is? David Strait. Yes. Okay. He teaches the, the, the state national courses, et cetera. Buses pulled up. I'm talking prison style buses to the treasury. Uh, I'm talking about dozens and dozens of police cars pulled up to the treasury. This just happened months ago, a few months back. Could be five, six months at the most, that long. And this was filmed by people that we trust, Richard Citizen Journalist, Nancy Drew, and they have incredible credibility with my audience and many, probably many of your audience as well. And people were held off in handcuffs at the Treasury because they finally did the audit and the audit didn't match. Whatever's left from the Treasury, we were told, or some could be speculation on some people's parts, that were merged with the whatever's left of the IRS, where the IRS's building is closed down, the Federal Reserve building, whatever's left of these three departments are all merged. Is it possible? Is it possible the reason why we have a lawsuit, a Kabuki Theater lawsuit, is because Ripple is not allowed to leave the United States of America and that money's worth so much money that they merged it with the whatever's left of the United States government, whatever the new banking system is going to be? because they already know the number it's going to be and they're not allowed to leave the United States. They don't want that kind of ingenuity to go and benefit Saudi Arabia, which Ripple does have offices there or the United Kingdom or uh, Singapore or Japan or Australia. And I could keep going on and on and on. Is it possible that there is a merger of this asset class with the treasury? Is that plausible? Okay. No so um, basically, I, I think I think XRP being that neutral bridge asset, and I may be wrong about this, but I, I think that Ripple can do business with anyone they want to. And also, we see Ripple um, expanding and also working with central banks from around the world. Um, there are documents to prove this. They're they're out there. If you go to every central bank, I have a document right here. Um, I'm going to pull it up for a second, and uh, you see central banks around the world already partnering with XRP, with Ripple, and holding the digital asset XRP. This is from the foreign and Russian experience of blockchain digitizing by the central banks. So it's the Russian central bank here. And yeah, they're partnering with Ripple XRP. And, you know, here, that's Russia, by the way. So, you know, go to the World Bank here, you see it too, in the World Bank. Um, I'll send this to you when we're done with the call. Um, sure. Uh, but I have, uh, 
document from the World Bank Group, and it talks about adopting these two, Ripple and XRP, I'm sorry, um, XRP and XLM to uh, financial institutions worldwide. So we see that they're already partnering. I think the lawsuit is there to buy time. For what end? I'm really not sure, but it's got to be something with the, the Fed being able to, or the ones in power here in, in Washington, um, trying to get a hold of more XRP maybe, or maybe it's to um, slow down the innovation as inflation continues to drag on and keep the debt-based system going. So basically making it harder for other countries by continuing to print money while still suing the law, uh, keeping the lawsuit running, that way it slows down and it puts more pressure on other countries to fall in line with the Davos group. Could be, you know, and very, that's very a possible. speculative. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, there, I'm speculating right there uh, because it, it kind of makes sense. But, you know, I mean, I think that XRP again is that neutral bridge technology to move value from A to B. So why wouldn't any hop on it. And then I thought, again, maybe the BRICS nations uh, was initially put out there to basically let the USA know, hey, we're ready to move on, you know? Um, I could be wrong about that, too, but, you know, yeah. Yeah, uh, Spark, Flare, uh, PolySign, um, in my opinion, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe these are two entities, mm -hmm. these are going to be two major breadcrumbs, because I believe with every fiber of my being that they have been ready for a long time. They just don't want to get themselves messed up with the shit storm that's going on right now. And spark flare drop has been delayed, delayed, delayed. Now they're saying January 9th, supposedly. I think these are going to be major, major markers as to sort of indicate when this war is over. Agree, disagree. If you disagree, tell us why. Well, <clears throat> in my honest and humble opinion, I, I don't know enough to answer that question. But if I was to speculate, I would say that there's a lot of innovation waiting until this lawsuit ends with the SEC and Ripple. So right. we're not going to see a lot of things come out. We're talking about real utility until after this ends. And that's why they call it the trial of the century. Um, because this is, remember, this is disrupting the financial system. We've seen disruption in every major industry, except for money. We need to see the disruption of money to where uh, we can move uh, as fast as information, the internet of value, they call it. So right. you know, until we see that be settled, a lot of things are going to just hold back, you know, right. other projects, like you said. So. Well, this is for all the casino chips. Mm -hmm. This is for everything. Mm -hmm. That's what we're playing for right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. And uh, somebody's got to win. Someone's got to lose. Uh, I mean, uh, you um, mentioned a little bit about Nasara Jasara in your last interview uh, with Crypto Rick over in uh, Australia. Uh, what do you know? I mean, do you? how much do you know? I mean, we have an entire website that's devoted to it. It, we found the most accurate website. It's a website that lives inside our website, which is qfs2020.com. Uh, and it's linked through our website, qfs1776.com. It's got, you know, a world of information in there. Um, where are you on on the, you know, the Jasar Nassar? How much have you looked into it? How much of it you feel is real? How much of you feel is not real? Uh, are we being played? Is this a psyop? I had people call me say, Mel, Mel, I think we're living in a psyop. Okay. <laughs> uh, I get all kinds of. Um, um, I can only imagine, man. <laughs> um, you know, with, with Nassar Chisara, um, it certainly is a very interesting topic because, you know, there's not enough information on it too publicly. I mean, if you dig deep enough, I'm sure you can find it, but right. you know, it's really uh, Nassar Jassar is basically about, you know, bringing power to the people again, resetting the financial system at the same time, bringing prosperity and uh, the, the, basically the wealth back to the people and distributing, yeah. Yeah. bringing in this new uh, era, utopian era of uh, innovation and technology and, you know, basically disclosing everything that's been covered up for so long. Yeah. Um, you know, 
but also, you know, we have to be careful because a lot of the time, and I'm not saying the Sarah Jassara is a bad thing. I think it's a fantastic thing based on what I've heard. But if we start to look at like a lot of the, um, usually the ones who come trying to bring a solution to everything, right, are usually the ones who are being deceptive. But I'm not saying the is doing that. That could be what Ripple's doing right now with the Davos group. Right. You know? So the Davos people are coming in, they're creating the financial instability that we're seeing right now, which is wiping out the middle class. And then they say, hey, we have a solution, CBDC, right? Powered by Ripple, whatnot. Right. So, you know, they're going to come in as the saviors when really they are the ones who are trying to enslave you. Now with Nasara Chisara, I don't see that. I think Nasara Chisara is really just going to reset everything and bring the prosperity. And now this, again, ties into what we talked about earlier is the project looking glass. Um, it's like you have your white hats and you have your, um, what, what do you call the other side? The, the Davos group, I like to call it that. Um, yeah, that's fine. Like they're playing a game of chess and each one knows what uh, the other one is about to do. And that's why we see so much corruption and, you know, um, going way down the rabbit hole right there. But, you know, Nasara Jasara, if it really occurs, uh, yeah, it would, it would free humanity from a lot of the problems we have here. The sickness, cancer, you know, all, all the good stuff. You know, this would be, it would be like alien technology in a sense. That's why they don't, they, they want, they, they, he wants to bring life extension technology. This is Trump, okay? He wants to give you life extension technology. I'll give you a few breadcrumbs. When he makes the inaugural speech, he said, we're giving the, we're transitioning the power back to you, the people. This is for your audience. Now, my, my audience knows this. And they say, Mel, we heard this story a million times. I know what you guys are thinking. Forget about it. Drop it. We give you the power back to you, the people. He's giving you Jasara and Asara. Trump, get, these are breadcrumbs that are, that are verifiable. They're documented. Okay. Trump does a, a mainstream interview, Fox. He's sitting across from this lady. I could probably dig up the interview uh, again if I had to, and I've shared it in my room at nauseum. Uh, and uh, they get to the end of the conversation, and they're talking about Iran, uh, Iraq. And at the last 15, 20 seconds, he says, well, he goes, we own $35 trillion of their currency. This is Trump. Another major, major breadcrumb. Again, this is for your audience. He's in Missouri. He's at an RV, a company that manufactures RVs. And he's talking to the audience and he turns around and says to his wife, honey, I think we should get one of these RVs and go tour the country. A guy that does his business on eight, you know, uh, 18, 24 karat gold plated toilet seats is not going to go on an RV. OK, it's a breadcrumb. OK, he comes down the escalator to announce he's running for president. And behind them, there's a sign that says currency exchange breadcrumb. These are all wow. breadcrumbs. Yeah, Did you know so. about any of this yourself? Well, uh, I start to look at, you know, when you look at like a lot of the stuff that's been predicted and then it happened. And, uh, you know, this raises so many questions into what the fuck is really going on here. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's very serious. You know, it's like, it seems like we have, um, we certainly have some sort of cabal, but we also have some sort of, uh, it's like the movie The Matrix with Neo. Right. Neo, he he's he's basically traveling back in time, if you think about it. Right. He 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 leaves into the real world, which is in the future, and the world right. is destroyed. He keeps coming back to destroy the the the, the AI god. Basically. Right, right. Now, where are you on trading? I, I tell my people stay away from trading, stay away, you know, buying low, selling high. You know, if you don't know what you're doing and, and you don't have the experience, you're going to get clobbered in that game. And it's we're about stocks? no, we're talking about trading digital assets. OK, well, you know what? Trading in general, uh, just so people understand that, the, the, I'm sure you know this, obviously, but the key is to buy when it's red and sell when it's green. Right. <laughs> A lot of people actually don't know that they, they usually buy when it's green because they think it will continue wow. to go. up. So. Um, but that's the biggest mistake you can make because the minute it goes up, there are people out there like you and I who are selling. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but everything. but so, the average person is going to get clobbered. 98% of people who trade lose their shorts. 
That's yeah, just it's, it's, it's it's like a it's like a casino. Uh, the yeah. stock market, the crypto market is like a casino. The house always wins more. And what they do is um, they're creating false and I'm not even joking. This is very interesting. My brother has to explain this to you. Mm. Um, false volatility on all the exchanges um, and the exchanges we've never heard of that have an equal amount of buy and an equal amount of selling. And on that fraction of buying and selling, when retail customers are getting in because of the false volatility, mm -hmm. it's not real. It's artificial, 100%. They are making um, small amounts mm -hmm. on it. They're making amounts on it. And this is happening millions of dollars back and forth, 24 seven around the clock. Uh, you know, So they're making money. It's like the Aladdin technology by BlackRock, if you've ever heard of it. Sure. Aladdin, yeah, Aladdin makes billions of dollars in a day just by trading on that little volatility, buy, sell, buy, sell real quick when they're using artificial intelligence to allow this to happen. So um, yeah, man, they're, they're cheating the system and they're stealing money gradually from the middle class and these people are too stupid to see it, you know? Yeah, so, well, Aladdin is a computer. Aladdin is a computer that's owned by BlackRock, the richest company in the world. They own 90% of all of the real estate around the world. You're not gonna compete with that, guys, okay? They're gonna eat your lunch, literally. And people don't get that. So I say, you know what? Just keep accumulating. This is the short bet. Stay in positive cash flow. Stay healthy. Okay? Stay in positive cash flow. Stay healthy. Accumulate. Keep accumulating and wait until your day in the sun comes. Period. Okay? Uh, where are you on XLM? Are you feel that XLM could be equally as big as XRP? Where are you on XDC? Enlighten us. Yes. Um, my brother and I have this debate quite often. Um, you know, you also have to look at what, what happened inside of Ripple. Uh, now, I don't know if this is how it really played out, but um, they had disagreements, Jed McCaleb with XLM and uh, the Ripple team, right? They had mm -hmm. disagreements, so they went their separate rates. He creates uh, the Stellar Lumens token. Um, right. And if you translate Stellar Lumens into it's like the enlightened one and whatnot. But then you look at Ripple and what they're doing. It's, you know, which one is for freedom, which one isn't. Anyways, regardless, um, I see all these tokens, the, uh, you know, the ISO coins having real utility, including Quant as well and mm -hmm. HBAR. Um, definitely very high price later on down the road. We're not going to see anything happen until later on. So like you said, um, right now, people need to continue to dollar cost average this stuff only buy the utility, don't buy the hype and speculation. And simultaneously also invest in hard assets. Um, I wanna show you this actually, I had this custom made in the pandemic. <laughs> nice. It's custom made through the pandemic. Yeah, coronavirus is gonna nice. be worth a lot later on, but you know, continue to hold uh, physical assets if you can you know, afford to do so, like gold and silver. And yeah. like you know, Mel Carmen said, just continue to double coverage that's the best way to do it and uh you have to be patient and all this stuff will play out later on down the road and that's yeah. exactly what we're covering here yeah what what is the, i mean look i know that you're not a doctor or a psychiatrist or a psychologist but what the hell is the problem with the bitcoin nancy's they've been arguing about the fact that you know decentralization i think i've seen probably at least 50 60 videos that prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that xrp is far far more decentralized than Bitcoin will ever be. There's an argument to be made for that. There's 50, 60 sure. videos I've watched. I'm sure there's another 50, 60 that I haven't watched. Where are you on decentralization? And why is this Bitcoin still alive? I think it's a detriment to the entire marketplace, to be quite honest with you. Amazing question. So when people look at Bitcoin, I think they have to, first of all, let's talk about the people who, the maxis, okay? I think they are mentally ill to some degree. Not all of them, but a few of them. Uh, I don't know if you heard Michael Saylor, that son of a bitch. Uh, may, I, may I say that? I'm sorry. He has actually encouraged... Yeah, Michael Saylor is a real piece of work, man. Oh, He's yeah. encouraged people to take their homes for Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. And to uh, yeah, collateralize everything in Bitcoin. And he said it's a store of value. Okay. Store of value does not move from 69,000 to 12,000 in a few weeks. Okay, or a month or two. A store of value holds its uh, ground. That's what a store of value is, right? Um, 
people say gold isn't a store of value. It is. And the reason why it's, it doesn't look like it is because they're manipulating the price. Now let's go back to Bitcoin. Basically, the people have invested so much money into it and they've known about it for so long because it was the first ever. They think that the first one is going to be the, the standard one. No, it's not. Um, it's just like Napster with the music. We've seen these examples many times. You know, so They came here, they brought the technology, they paved the way for new innovation and new stuff. And that's what they've done. They broke down Bitcoin and they found the problems with it. They made solutions for it. They found something else. They fixed the solution for that. And now you have the superior digital asset that eventually will clear the Bitcoin space. And I guarantee that. Another thing is when people have their money invested in things, they like to believe without even understanding it that their investment was the right one. You know, So there's um, a little bit of uh, reverse psychology going on in there within themselves. So they're creating their own problem for themselves and they don't even know it. Um, <laughs> another thing is also, you know, it's like Bitcoin, we have to understand what is pumping the price up. Well, it's really just one person trading a piece of shit for another person who's going to pay for a higher price for it. Um, there's no real utility in it. Uh, I tried using Bitcoin before I had to pay a ridiculous fee just to buy a cup of coffee. And this was overseas. And I said, I'll never use this crap again, you know, and this was before I even studied Bitcoin, by the way. Um, so a long time ago, I had a few Bitcoin, you know. Um, did not work, not efficient. And what else? We also have to look at what's keeping the price up right now. And it's really uh, Tether, uh, USDT has been, uh, and they're insolvent, by the way, and they mm -hmm. are not uh, backed by anything. It's like, a, it's like a printing machine for the Fed. The Fed has the printing machine, you know, with printing fiat currency. The same thing is with Bitcoin. Uh, Tether is printing artificial money, which is keeping the Bitcoin price stable and higher. And that money is not backed by anything. And it's only pumping up other cryptocurrencies that are pegged or not pegged, but like following the movement of Bitcoin. You know how it's all tied together. When Bitcoin goes up, the whole cryptocurrency industry goes up. So it's all artificial. And again, people don't understand that. And they're not going to understand it until they lose more money. And, you know, this is what we've been seeing, you know, I promise you, uh, USDT is the biggest uh, ticking time bomb in the crypto industry that will bring the whole thing down and give a reason to bring in something like XRP that will regulate the whole damn space, you know, so. Well, you called Michael Saylor a yeah. piece of shit and you got the balls to do so. And I will second the motion. Yes, he's a piece of shit. Absolutely. He talks with this. He, you want to talk about somebody who's highly educated, talks a lot of jargon that he will give you this long winded reason as to why you should invest in the Bitcoin when he was doing it. Now he's no longer part of it from what I understand. He's probably a secret, uh, you know, XRP investor in a closet and which we'll talk about that in a second as well. But, you know, when he gives you these long explanations, he was on Patrick, you know, Patrick uh, from value attainment. Are you familiar with who he is? Uh, yes. Iran Iranian yes, guy. Yes, I, uh... Yeah, I love him. Anyway, yeah, no, he's great. He's awesome. Patrick's amazing. But he was on the show and he gave this long winded, you know, Ivy League, incredible words that if you asked him after he was done blurbing out all that jargon, what the hell he actually just said now. Can you please do me a favor, Mr. Sailor? Could you explain that in layman's terms? I guarantee you. I guarantee you, he will not be able to explain it because it was a bunch of bullshit. Right. Yeah. You know, it's 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 truly um, a sad thing when we start to look at the people we look up to, like uh, even Kevin O'Leary for a while. People were looking up to Kevin O'Leary, and I never right. did. I always thought he was uh, another corrupt person, you know, along with Absolutely. a lot of the other figures people look up to, Kramer, right. uh, Kevin O'Leary. Sorry, even at one point, BitBoy was not honest either. You know, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, giving him shit right now, but you know, uh, he was not honest in the past, and I've seen this before. You know, I watched a few of his videos, and me, I see through bullshit real fast, and that's because how I was raised and educated. Uh, I kind of just look through it and I say, okay, yeah, I'm not going to listen to this. You know, sometimes you really have that. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a very spiritual thing. You could just see through bullshit. You don't need to even absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you went to BitBoy. BitBoy, and I, I know this because I've been in this market space for like seven years. And I could tell you emphatically that I watched dozens and dozens of videos, hundreds of videos all collectively. But I watched dozens of BitBoy's videos 
talking crap about XRP, discouraging people from buying it. And all of a sudden, here he is. He's got a million XRP. He's invested. Now he calls himself the supreme leader of the army barracks of XRP. You might know a lot about a lot, but let me tell you, you discouraged a lot of people from investing in the one because you were invested in another one that you needed to get it pumped up so that you could drive a Lamborghini. You see, people like me could read right through your bullshit, sir. Okay. You might be hanging out over there by uh, in, in the Bahamas uh, yelling at the guy who stole your money. You know, it's poetic justice, baby. You know, at the end of the day. Um, if I, if I can go Please. ahead. No, no, I can't get yeah, I apologize. Uh, one thing I, I want to clarify, you know, and when we when we're talking like this about like these people like Kevin O'Leary, um, mm -hmm. Michael, Stella, we're we're not doing it. I want the audience to hear this: is we're not doing this to, um, you know, we're better than everybody else. Right. We're not. Of course. We're all here to learn from this space, but it's just very hypocritical. And when for someone who can be hypocritical to dozens of people out there, you know, um, I mean, how do you live with yourself? I really yeah. can't. Yeah, uh, maybe when I was younger, I would have done something stupid like that, but not anymore, you know. Um, but yeah, it's very hypocritical and you're misleading people. And this is hurting families out there and people, too. I mean, how many people lost Bitcoin? I mean, money because uh, Bitcoin tanked after he kept pushing people to get into it. And, you know, being an XRP grandfather, I mean, father of XRP army. And I mean, you know, this is stupid. It really yeah. is. It's, really? it's people who have been just really trying to spread the information and awareness uh, the right way and bring in everything where the macro and the micro, how it all ties in together. So people have a clear understanding what, where they're putting their money, where this is going, right? You have to give right. a clear picture, not just put your money where, I mean, tell people to put their money where you think it's best for your sure. own interest. And that's very selfish. So that's well, what I I'll tell saying. you, and I think you'll agree with this, uh, Versan. I think that you will see the Michael Saylors and hypocritical on steroids, okay? They are gonna come out of the woodwork. When XRP, uh, the 99,000 pound gorilla that's sitting inside the cage, that it's in the room and nobody wants to acknowledge that there's a 99,000 pound gorilla sitting in the cage. When they allow that gorilla to come out of the cage and wreak havoc in a good way and be able to move mountains, financially speaking, the Michael Saylors and the Max Kaisers are gonna come out and talk about XRP, like it's the best thing since Hagen dazs ice cream, flushing toilets, and whatever else you want to throw in there. And they're going to say, yeah, you should invest. When you hear those guys tell you you should invest, I can assure you that XRP is probably at 100 bucks minimum. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you'll be too late to the party because you won't listen to guys like me and him telling to invest right now when it's 35 or 32 cents. I don't even pay attention to the price. The price is a distraction. It's still a good price too. You know, uh, I've had people tell me in the last few days, hey, I'm going to wait for it to go lower. And I'm like, don't be greedy. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. You know, Thank get you. in now and uh, just hold it, you know, continue the dollar cost average. It goes down by more, sure. But, you know, later on, this is where the money is going. This is where the transition of value is going. So um, right. whether people understand it or not, I mean, here we are doing our part, man. And this is the best way we can do it. It's like the matrix, you know, they say, uh, when Morpheus says to Neo, um, no one can ever be shown the matrix. They have to see it for themselves, you know? So mm -hmm. you know, the, the listeners have an obligation to themselves as well to do their own due diligence and research into what we're talking about. If, we, if they find something that's sound, think about it, make an investment. You know, I'm not telling people what to do with their money, but um, I yeah. mean, we're talking about where the money is going. So trust me, you know, we, we, I don't like to say, trust me, <laughs> people <laughs> think I'm dishonest now. But no, it's um, if you follow the money, this is where it's fucking going. That's it, you know. And yeah. why not think like a one percent elite for for a few weeks, months, maybe? Yeah. You know? We were not People supposed so to be distracted with all this, and the, this is what really the whole. Oh, it was really, you know, uh, the banks did not wake up to the XRP, and 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 it played to our favor. Uh, because they tried to really create their own XRP, thinking that they didn't need Ripple. And then they realized that, first of all, when they went to go hire talent, there was nobody left in the talent pool because anybody who's anybody is already working for who? Ripple, okay? And so when they realized that the secret sauce recipe was so complicated, they tried to get back into, you know, uh, you know the CBDCs. I think the I'm talking about the central bank digital currency that are for the banks, I think, Many of them are not going to see the light of day because 
again, it's the same old game. They can print CBDCs until the cows come home to infinity. I hope not. And yeah, and the scary thing is with the CBDC, you you see the integration of a social credit program to it. And that's the real concerning thing uh, as far as liberties and freedom. And I mean, trust me, the last thing these middle-class people, uh, including uh, myself, we don't want to see is a CBDC. And I'll tell you why. It's because there's time frames attached to it, which means you can no longer save money anymore like we used to right now. If I have savings, I'm going to put it, some people put it under a mattress, okay, in their savings, and they want to go to a dream uh, vacation or something. You right. won't be able to save your money anymore. And they're going to use this excuse to say, we have a time frame on the money. That way we never see a crash in the economy like this again. And that's their, their end game again. And have you dependent on the state for your money, your food, your energy, your water, you know, and we don't want this. This These is all possible with the CBDC. And it can be weapons. Yeah. They are psychopaths and uh, yeah, they are very sick people, mentally yeah. disturbed. And, you know, these are the people running the countries. Yeah, anybody who thinks that they're going to be able to want, want to control us through a monetary system, providing they survive the central bank digital currency, in my opinion, the central bank digital currency that represent each country will survive. And there was not, there's not going to be an infinite amount where they could print until the cows come home. There are going to be some regulations in place where, you know, if it's the XRP that's going to end up being the bridge currency to all of it, uh, XRP has to be worth a big number. We know that. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, the central bank digital currency, uh, in my opinion, does not see the light of day. The banks are going to be called um, financial service centers. They're not going to be called banks. They're not going to be able to bleed us like they have in the past. There's going to be a lot of rules and regulations. That's why this thing has taken so long, in my opinion. I, I would love to for the movie to end. More Absolutely. Than but and uh, it, it's been, uh, you know, it's taken yep. a toll on everybody. Um uh, what do you think, uh, you know, uh, as far as how this movie ends? I mean, are we close at this point or or we or could this thing still get dragged on another two, three years? Um, based on what I've been told, uh, that we may see this by March 2023. Um as far as like the lawsuit ending, the financial crisis, all this mm -hmm. shit going on, because what I've learned now, this is my own research by following the central banks. I've discovered that they are going to probably play more games with the market. They've decided to print more money again. They're going to raise interest rates. I think by the end of this week or next week, I'm sorry, next week, uh, right. raise interest rates again by 50 basis. If I'm wrong about that. I want to be called out on it on my channel uh, because I I'm really going to predict that right now. I think by next week, they're going to raise interest rates by 50 basis points. And that's just going to continue to drag the shit show on where they're going to have a reason to print more money. And I think stimulus checks will come back again um, into 2023. Uh, really? But I would say, you know, the latest thing this can go, I would say is another, another year. That's it, man. And I, I say it like that is because the outcry from, from the people, the middle class will be heard eventually. And like I said, there are so many people right now, this is alone in just Houston, Texas. We are hearing so many stories about poverty already. People getting evicted out their homes, families on the street, little people on the street, kids, man, in their 20s that don't have the parental support here. They're already on the street. How many times, how many times have you drove by a street and see a gorgeous young girl on the street? Think Not about the, the things that she's gonna have to expose herself to now to make a living. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's sad that nobody's talking about this. We're talking about um, raising in interest rates. Like that's going to make a difference. Raising interest rates is going to explore inflation where it's going to come right back to us. I mean, how stupid are the people? You know, it's, it's sad. And nobody is talking about the middle class right now who's getting wiped out so fast. And it's just, it's crazy, man, you know? Yeah. Uh, where are you on the universal basic income uh I mean, obviously, we know that if the good guys win, it's going to be five, six thousand dollars a month. We know if the bad guys win, it's going to be five, six hundred dollars a month, ten times less. OK, uh, where are you on that? Do you know anything about it? Uh, I always thought that the central bank digital currency could be some sort of universal basic income. Um, mm -hmm. The reason I say that is because if they're going to be depositing funds into the account. It's technically a UBI right there. Um, UBI could be, you know, it really sounds like a central bank digital currency disguised, you know, 
under a universal basic income, because that's really what it is, depositing money into a digital account, and you have one account with the treasury or the Fed or some central bank or something like that. Uh, but that's really what a universal basic income is, being, basically being money deposited into your account to go ahead and stimulate the economy, really. You know? Yeah. I need to do more research, though. Yeah, we're, li we're living in some crazy times, brother. The only thing I could tell you is, you know, God save us all. Because I'll tell you what, you know, I was sent here from God, believe it or not. I really believe that today. Because, you know, when you are... Uh, I I don't know if I um, did you ever come across one of my videos where I show the face of God in the clouds and the XRP logo. Did you ever come across one of those videos of mine? Oh, but you have to send that to me afterwards. The link. I'll watch the whole thing. Yeah. Um, if I could figure out a way to uh, grab it, I will show it to you now. Uh, but we could say goodbye to the audience. I will definitely show it to you. I mean, there's a XRP logo. I'll explain it to the audience. And uh, and basically, it's even got the separation in the middle of the X's. I mean, it's that wild. Uh, and I sent it to my friend, Kathy, and she sends it back to me. She said, yeah, but you forgot to see this. And she circles it in red. And there's a face of God that is undeniable. Okay? And so, and nice. and this, this chair has got a story. And it's all prophetic, I believe. And there, there's a reason why... People like yourself, people like myself are activated in this fight uh, as we try to make sure that evil loses and, and the good people win, Jasara and Asara. Uh, I think that's what's going to end up happening. But it's, you know, we're all getting a little bit battle fatigue, but I'm I'm taking my XRP vitamins every day. And I drink my eight cups of espresso. He, he, he does too. I, I do eight. <laughs> you know, and we keep coming at you. We're, you know. Crazy. Yeah, no, I, I drink way too much espresso. Yeah. I drink way too much coffee myself. Uh, but I, I love it. You know, it's one of the things that maybe I probably will not give up. My, maybe not the healthiest thing for yeah, you. No. But brother, it's been an absolute real pleasure. We're going to say goodbye to the audience. Uh, I learned a lot. I'm sure you probably learned a few things from me too. Uh, you could also learn what not to do for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so hit the pause button. We'll say goodbye to the audience. Make sure... You spread this link, and he's over at Black Swan Capitalist, okay, on YouTube. Make sure you guys follow him as well. We're going to put this also in our Telegram groups. And uh, make sure you spread this out there, folks. That's your job. We need we depend on you guys to sort of circumvent the algorithms. And uh, without the digital soldiers, we don't go too far. So we're definitely indebted to you guys. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.